Welcome to another 885 SoCal Sound Session. Julie Slater, Midday Host. I am here with the LA band Long Beach. I guess you guys are Long Beach in the house, yep. LBC. Mm -hmm. It is Kilo Bravo. Welcome, boys. Thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, let's do a little intro. So we got Chris. Yep. Uh, vocals, guitar. Uh, Dave, slapping at bass. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, we got Adrian, nice. guitar. Greg, what do you do? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This sort of things. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, not, cool. Not, Nothing much beyond that. Yeah. <laughs> so is the original, did you guys get together originally, you two, in uh, like 2018 or something? Um, so 2018, I did an EP kind of by mm -hmm. myself. Um, I wasn't trying to start a band, but it just happened. And uh, I started working on putting a band together to play live. And then uh, me and Dave, we're all old friends. With it. Dave and I have been in bands previously, like years and years before that. And Did you guys meet at playing pool? That's the story online. <laughs> oh, We're shooting some pool. Is that no. story online? I mean, the, the first time we ever met was in a friend's garage. Yeah, yeah. Playing, yeah we, we were playing pool. That's true. Who who said that? Who said? I that don't know. That? I don't Did know why that. that? Guys, I've done some deep research. Yeah, on you but guys. yeah, that I'm is a journalist. Yeah, yeah. That is how we, yeah. we, we were doing when we met. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We, were, we we were playing pool in a friend's garage, and then we had pretty much the same sense of humor, and we just it uh, kind of took off from there. Yeah, and we became buds. I moved back home to Pennsylvania for a little bit, came back, and then we started hanging out more and playing music. Say, hey man, want to start a band? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. I mean, he he came in when, when uh, I like put together a collection of songs that were intended for the first record, and I was like, hey, I really want you to play on these. And then at the around the same time, we started jamming with Greg for fun to see how it mm -hmm. felt and. Greg's all over the record. I think that record has three drummers, but Greg's on more than half of it. Um, and that and came out in 2020? 2020, Chew This Slow. And yeah, we all met. We've all known each other for over 10 years now. I mean, most importantly, who's the best pool player? That's a good question. Not, it's not me. It's we not should good. have a little tournament. I think Greg. Greg we should find yeah. out. Greg's probably pretty good. I mean, you hang out at bars a lot. At pool halls, right? <laughs> yeah, pool hall. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, the old billiards club. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know me. Greg looks like a pool player. I do. Right? You yeah, can yeah. Yeah. give off that vibe. You do. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like you could maybe do it. <laughs> okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm not that good at it. What does a pool player okay. look like? I just imagine some salty old guy that's been hanging out in the same bar stool for. He definitely has an eye patch. He has an eye yeah, patch. At least yeah. one eye patch. That's so yeah. you can focus. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. He's not even missing a nine. It's just it's, yeah, it's just yeah. Right. All right. So the new record, <laughs> <laughs> we're pulling it back. The new record is uh, "Good Grief." Came out just this year. Yeah. Last so month. yeah. Uh, tell me, I guess. Well, the title, of course, sounds like you guys went through some stuff. We've joked uh, chatting with each other. A lot of cursing on this record. Are you guys really mad? Um. I mean, it's yeah. Just I fun. think you know. I, I've. I I haven't like thought a lot about the context of everything recently because it's we recorded it you know a couple of years ago, um, but I've had a lot of people be like, "Man, you sound pretty angry," and I think I was like that time that time period like I personally was going through a lot of stuff that like even these guys probably don't know about, but it was just like really hard times for me. And on top of that, you know, we all dealt with the same thing at the same time that was super traumatic in a way and going through the pandemic oh yeah going through yeah. the pandemic and and being like subjected to like just this onslaught of like information negative information mostly on like every day and it was really frustrating for me and i turns out i had a few things to say about it all <laughs> and what about you played three songs for us tell us about the flood it sounds like a flood of information. Are you a big, like, do you really lock into news? Do you listen to a lot of news? Um, some of the lyrics seem sort of, you know, maybe that's I honestly, of some of it. Yeah, I honestly try to not, not take in too much of it because it's all, you know, hit and miss. You never know what's real anymore. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's hard to decipher, like, especially, like, I would see most of it on, like, social media or something. It's like, that's the worst place to see it. Um, the flood is, I don't know, it's just me, like, thinking about the future of our planet and the current situation we're in, and, you know, I was just, like, that song in particular, I was just, like, thinking about how, like, oh, we're, like, sitting on our phones, rotting our brains, 
letting people tell us what reality is and and I don't know trying trying to look at it from the outside and it's it sounds like a sad song it's supposed to be hopeful <laughs> did you feel hopeful after recording the record yeah, yeah. all yeah, of you absolutely. yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah well, that, that felt song, really good about it that song in particular we did live right oh yeah that song mm -hmm. it's funny I actually wrote that song the morning of our last day in the studio. Like, got up at six in the morning and sat on a patio and wrote it. And then we we're like about to wrap up and a producer was like, hey, we got time. I was like, I got a song. I love that. And that's probably the third take. Yeah. That's the first time I ever sang it without messing it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give it a listen now. The Flood, it is Kilo Bravo. Right now at 88.5. On the brink of our demise It's easy to surmise that you Don't realize that you've been poisoning your mind Total lack of self-control Living in the hypothetical The earth is flat and digital But you can't say that It's not the time to joke Assuming that we stand a chance Against our problematic past Well all you need Is a straight white guy like me to tell you I've been thinking That I don't want to think again We're slowly sinking in an ocean of our pollution Let's not talk about that we miss out What nation living under a rock Well I guess it's not so bad After all To quote the white suburban model And designer of a rose Ten billion clicks On our Official politics Yeah, it's all nonsense And they're making us Subscribe to it Assuming that We turn around Before the flood reaches your town Well, I would need This free delivery We're slowly sinking in an ocean of our pollution Let's not talk about the lies that we miss out One nation living under Again, we're 
sun is sinking in an ocean of our pollution. Let's not talk about the lies that we built up. So I loved when I was looking up, we've been featuring you guys as a local music spotlight, but I always want to find like, oh, wow, I wonder if these guys have any new music because we were playing a song from your other album. And then all of a sudden I heard the song Lucinda. And I just, we were joking, like, I think it's the biggest banger on the record, even though every song's a banger. But it's a really <laughs> great, it's such a good song. So tell me, I guess, you know, what went into that? That song? Uh, you know, that's that's a song that I didn't know we were gonna put on the record. I, uh, I, I really wanted to do it. He, he sent me the demo and I was like, we gotta do this. Yeah, I demoed it out and it was just kinda, it, it's actually kinda funny. I, uh, it kinda ties into the station. I remember I was going for a jog and Mookie was like, hey, I'm gonna play your guys' song this time, this, this day. And I was like, cool, I'll like, I'm off that day, I'll go for a jog and listen. And he played a song from someone else, I can't remember who, and I was like, oh, I like how it starts like with just bass and drums. Like I didn't even I can't even say who it was, but like it just like inspired me on the spot. And I went home and I was just like, I want to start a song like that. And I demoed this thing and I was like, I don't know if this really sounds like us, like it's very different from the last record. And I sent it to him and he's like, Yeah, we gotta record that. And I think even our producer was like, I don't know if this is you guys. <laughs> and we talked him into it and it came out great. Yeah. That's funny. I love that song. Yeah. I, mean, I do it's too. Such it's a, a strong one. Uh, musically is so great, but even lyrically, even though there's some questionable lyrics that I had it's, added it's out a little to strong. put it on there. You know, I, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I remember in the demo, when we went in to record it, I think Greg kicked it up a couple notches in the tempo, and like that just felt like, that felt right. Like it's like really fast and quick, and yeah, it was good. Yeah, I would say re recording it was challenging. Like, Why? Well, we we never rehearsed it. Like we didn't know how to play it. Like so, we had to learn it while we were recording, and it was just like a, it's a tough song. Like Greg's basically like on the entire time. like ripping yeah. the whole song. <laughs> like that's Greg's song. It moves. Um, and it's it quick. Like every everything moves quick. It's a short song, and yeah, as you said, some questionable lyrics that uh, they were definitely protested in the studio by our producer. Also, <laughs> and we had to have a group vote. Shocking. And what about, we were kind of joking that there's a lot of expletives on the whole record that you were saying, like, well, I didn't really, like, write this thinking it was going to be on the radio or whatever. Yeah, like, absolutely. And then you had something kind of funny to say about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I never thought that, like, especially, like, right, public radio is going to care about us. Like, we're a small band from... We care about you guys. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, it's, it's stations like you guys that really build a lot of bands and and give us, you know, our, our project our voices to people that want to hear it. But I was in the mindset I was like, ah, eh, no one, no one cares. Like, I'll just say what we want to say and like do what if, we want. Yeah, if it lends itself to like being like a, a word that makes sense in the song, like I don't, I don't like pointless profanity, like. Which is crazy because there's so much popular music where that's like the thing that it does, um, and that was another thing that inspired me. I was like, "Well, if, if Post Malone could say this in his single ten times, why can't I say it in a song no one's gonna listen to?" <laughs> <laughs> Normalize it, yeah. There you yeah. go. Well, let's listen to Lucinda.
We are here with Kilo Bravo, Julie Slater, 88.5 of SoCal Sound. Uh, tell me where, I always like to know, can you tell me where most of the songs were written and also where you, were you exactly, what studio you were at, where you were recording? Okay, uh, most of the songs were written in my bedroom or on a porch or anywhere I'm holding a guitar. Um, there were songs that I brought in with these guys that were like, a verse and an idea and we flush it out and turn them into songs like I don't have like I don't think we have a formula like we just write how we write and just go for it we recorded at uh, in a studio that I think it's still officially the music box studio um, it was formerly in Fullerton now it's in Idlewild California run by John O'Brien who's our producer he's produced everything we've done um, so it's fun we got to go out there and stay for like a chunk of time and record instead of like usually when we're a band like us trying to be conservative with our money and it's like record a couple days go home every night so it was nice to like camp out and really make a record and like not have any outside things kind of distracting us how long did it take to record the whole album three four weekends it's a four, four three-day weekends yeah. yeah 12 days between january and march of 2022 Yep, 12 days to make a record. It's just the That's longest longest time I've ever spent on a record. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. As far as, like, the recording process, for sure. So tell us about uh, the song The Tantrum. How did that come about? And did it come out exactly like you imagined? I mean, that song was brought... That was another song we weren't really planning on recording because I didn't know it existed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got to the studio and we were going through... I had this list of 25, 30 songs. And what I always do with John, our producer, is we kind of like get together and go, these are ones we're really excited about. These are ones that we think are good. And these are the ones like, forget it. <laughs> and we were like, uh, narrowed our list down to like 15 or something. And John was like, hey, do you remember that one song I sent you like a year ago or six months ago or something? And then, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a cool song, man. You should record it. And he's like, you should record it. <laughs> and so The Tantrum was written uh, by John, mostly. I got to contribute some lyrics, and we arranged it on the spot and recorded it very quickly, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Be between you guys, um, so sing it out, and then us playing it, I didn't think it was going to sound like that. Yeah. 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 It was a very like kind of like acoustic-driven, just kind of folk song, I guess. And we're like, let's make it sound like us. Well, and let's listen to it right now. Uh, the Tantrum, Kilo Bravo.
much I care So what? I'm scared Beware I care Yeah, I care So much I care So what? I'm scared Beware Who cares? We are chatting with Kilo Bravo, Julie Slater, 88.5 at SoCal Sound. Uh, tell me, um, I guess you already talked about writing more music, so it's kind of wild. You just put out this record, and now you guys are already working on another album? I mean, that's the goal, yeah. We're, we've, we've just started the process of like me sending them songs and us getting together and just working on ideas. We're going to be back in the studio actually this weekend uh, working on a couple things. Hopefully, but the goal for me is, and us is to make another record. Um, but who knows? We'll like, see how that goes. We don't have. Last time I like, scheduled like this is when we're gonna make our record. This time we're just like let's get in the studio, record some stuff, and see how we feel. We also have uh, more new music that's recorded. That something's gonna be coming out again in a couple months. Because why? I don't know. I don't want to hold on to it. Do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it out there. Yeah, I mean, like writing, making records is my favorite thing, and performing. But I love making records; it's so fun. And what bands, like, what are your two, maybe two top two bands that influence you? Each one oh of you, my God. Mm, just two. like as yeah. us or just as a person? Just a, as a person, person, yeah. Oh, the Clash is my favorite band That's of all true. time, oh, or not for sure. <laughs> mm, it's always a tough question because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, it's like I have favorite bands and then bands that inspire my. Musicianship, I don't know. You, you go and I'll think about it. <laughs> Zeppelin, Beatles, those are my comfort, I guess, comfort bands. Uh, I mean, I love 80s Britpop, so Duran Duran and David Bowie. Yeah. You've got like two Bowie tattoos, don't you? Just one. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Just one, man. Just one. He's not the, the, the other one's fan. a birthmark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to be the shape of David Bowie. Yeah. Uh, biggest influences, I mean, as a songwriter, absolutely the Beatles and. My favorite band is probably Wilco, and I saw you have them DJing all month. That's exciting. They're our April that's Artists in Residence. Incredible. Yeah, that's yeah. super fun. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I saw them like three times last year. Can we hang out in the studio when that's happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just stay right here. You Just don't, don't leave. leave. <laughs> <laughs> what about favorite shows? Like, Do you have a concert you've oh. gone to that oh, man, so blown many, you away? So many favorite shows. I mean, every time I think of this, the thing that comes to mind was I saw Foo Fighters when I was like 18, and... It like yeah. blew my head off. I was like, whoa, this they're, is they're, a rock band. They're one of the best live bands. Them and the Hives are like my favorite bands to see live. They're really fun. Uh, there's a local band called Charles Mansion, and they got back together for like a reunion show, and that was one of the best shows ever. I was at that show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a good show, a very good show. Yeah. Sonic Youth playing Daydream Nation in its entirety at the Greek Theater. I don't know what year that was. I think it was still in high school when I saw that show, but that was, yeah, that was a pivotal moment in my life. That's great. Mm -hmm. Are you guys all from Long Beach then? Or is that where you guys gathered? Oh, we, yeah, I mean, that's like home base. Yeah. It's, it's like where the band's but, kind of from. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite thing about Long Beach and least favorite? Oh, oh, least oh favorite. I can parking. 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 Parking's parking. awful. That's, that's, um, that's least favorite everyone thing across the board. <laughs> least favorite is parking. <laughs> now, Long Beach is such a great town. There's no other place probably in Southern California where I could afford to live as close to the beach. As I do, got great record stores, great places to eat, great coffee shops, great people. 
killer music scene. It's a good town. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Long Beach. I love the food. I love the culture. Um, like, highlight spots, fingerprints, records. Like, gotta go to fingerprints. Go to Vine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, like, our hang. One of our favorite places to play. I got a shout out. Twelves. Twelves record shop. Twelves, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventh and Olive. Yeah. Are you guys vinyl collectors? I am. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's the place to go. Nice. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you want a good New York style slice of pizza, go to Little Coyote. Yeah. They do a good version of that, mm-hmm. which everyone says that it doesn't exist on the West Coast. But it's hard it's, to find. Very yeah. hard to find. So I'm definitely gonna have to take a trip down there. Yeah. yeah. The the pizza here is okay. Dave's from the East Coast. So yeah. He's, 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 he's not <laughs> from here. <laughs> he's a Philly transplant, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, fine. you guys, thank you for coming by. Uh, everybody, the new album is Good Grief. Uh, Kilo Bravo. Uh, can't wait for some live shows. You said you might be having a show coming up. Yeah, we'll be June. playing. We'll be playing Costa Mesa on June eighth at the Wayfair, and uh, we'll be at the Monty Bar in Los Angeles on June twenty second. Doing it's actually like a Kinks thing night, so we'll be doing some Kinks songs too, as well as our songs, and we'll have some other stuff coming up. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming by. Yeah. The thanks, for, thanks, for having us. thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks, for it. It. thanks for editing some of those bad words out of this. Uh, it was, it was hard, but me. we tried. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. you.